Hello guys, how are you all doing today? Well, today's video is going to be Tarantula Mythbusters, the G. Rosea. I got so many comments about G. Roseas and uh, a lot of new T-Uners need help on that species. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a detailed video as possibly as I can to uh, help you guys. So, I'm going to break up in this video into several parts. So, uh, the common names, well, I'll list them up. Uh, in pet stores, what you will note on pet, when you find them at pet stores, uh, typical cage setups, uh, basic care sheet. Um, I'll mention briefly about that, uh, about the feedings, the handlings, and their odd behavior in captivity, which is basically why I don't recommend them as a good uh, beginner species, and probably why everyone is. Uh, worried about the species. Okay, so first I'm gonna write down all the common names that the species can go under. Okay, so our common G. rosea has, well, a plethora of common names. So pestors will either label them as rose-haired, Chilean rose, rosy-haired, or Chilean fire, as in the case of the uh, red form sling. To be honest, I like to use the Latin names because that's what it is. Gramasola rosea or Gramasola pottery. We're still kind of in the fence whether or not the actual rosea, the ones in pet stores, are really pottery or rosea. So um, until taxonomy changes, we'll we'll let you guys know actually what we will call it. So pet stores. Well, these are probably the most common tarantulas available, and uh, you can find them in any pet store with a reptile department. They're usually very affordable. Uh, cost is around uh, 20 to $25 depending on which pet store you get them from. Over here they're around $30 with tax. So they roughly are a good size, three to five inches. So what pet store owners will tell you is that the, they may be very young, but Obviously, this is not true. With Gramostola roseas, you have to understand that these are a really slow-growing species. Uh, they take, on average, five, no, maybe six to eight years to fully grow into a uh, mature specimen. So, I'll give you an idea of what a one-year-old would look like. All right, so here is Bloom. This is my Gramostola rosea red color form. So, in theory, this is what a year-old specimen would look like. As you can see, I raised her up uh, for about a year as a half-inch spiderling, which is a newborn. So, you can see, it's not that big. So, pet stores will often sell sizes that are very similar to Michaela. She is an adult female, so this most likely she is in the eight to nine year old range. But there's really no need to worry about the age, as G. rosea females can live up to 25 years. If you guys remember uh, Ruby that passed away, uh, I think over a year ago, she was close to being 23, 25. So if it's a female, you're really likely to have her for a very long time. Now the difference is also uh, wild caught and captive bred which is labeled as WC for wild caught and CB for captive bred. Most G. roseas are wild caught and unfortunately um, for slings they cost slings like this cost around ten dollars adults are twenty dollars so if you want to say to yourself, would you rather buy an adult over a sling that will take uh, seven years to mature? So that's unfortunate. So, um, so just because of the price gap between a sling and an adult, most likely people are going to buy an adult because they're a lot easier to take care of than a spiraling. Which is a shame though, because uh, Jiruzeas are almost caught every day and uh, the populations are slowly going to start to decrease within the future if people keep catching them in the wild. This is why I actually prefer captive bred and then wild because wild caught specimens sometimes will have um, mites in them if they're not careful but you can actually see the mites 
those little white um, specks that move, then you might have a serious problem with uh, with wild caught ones. But also, pet store owners, well, pet store clerks will often tell you, oh, you need to get a um, heater or uh, this uh, funky uh, water dish. You really don't need it. So uh, that's that's all I have to say about uh, pet stores. So you really don't need that much stuff to uh, keep a Jirazea content and happy. Okay, so now that was part two. So part three is the typical cage setup. Well, not gonna lie, this is really what you need. Really need. You don't need something really extraordinary. So I like to keep everything all simple. So basically, all you need for Jirazea is the following. Let me just open up the cage. Okay, all you need, water dish, so it could drink water. Some substrate. I prefer also um, potting soil. Or you can buy this from the pet store. Uh, this is Eco Earth that comes in the brick. It's called Plantation Soil by Exoterra, which is the same substrate that I use for uh, Kingler, the Halloween crab. Uh, chilling somewhere, making a burrow, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so all you need is a cave for it to hide, and um, substrate and water dish. And there's Talia. Who, uh, who was just fed uh, during my birthday. Now for a basic care sheet video of the species. Well, these are one of the ridiculously easy species to care for, and this is why a lot of uh, new beginners offer the species. Well, simple cage requirements, that's what they'll need. Um, a tall, well, a wide enclosure than tall, because you don't want a two of a tall enclosure like those big exoterra uh, cages that people like to house them in. I don't find them very good because uh, too tall of a tank might actually kill the tarantula and rupture its abdomen. Okay, so heat requirements. Uh, typical conditions for any tarantula is 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So 75 F is room temperature. So it's really not a hard temperature to actually get it. Basically, if you feel comfortable in your room, so will the tea. This is how I heat my room. I use a space heater by Holmes. I'm just going to close the cage so she doesn't uh, escape. They're also very good escape artists. So basically this is what, how I how, uh, heat the teas. I just use a uh, ceramic home heater by Holmes. I usually keep it on the low setting shut the door and within 15 minutes the tea room is really warm. I tend to keep my room around 82 Fahrenheit during the day and 77 F at night. So you really want to mimic their climate and give the tarantulas a sense of day or a sense of time rather. So it shouldn't be too bad. I don't recommend heat mats or like heat pads because they're um, they're quite dangerous. If a tarantula does decide to burrow, it might actually go get too close to the heat mat and actually burn itself. Heat lamps are probably okay, but that, then again, it's really not recommended for a G. rosea. For specimens that uh, really need high heat, like uh, T. blondi, then you might want to invest yourself in a heat lamp. So with G. roseas, you really don't need it. And also, this care sheet video will also apply to um, you know, species like the brachypelmas, the Mexican red knee, the fire leg, the painted red leg, uh, and the aphonal palma species. You can basically care for them the same. And for humidity, all you need to do is just fill up the water dish and let it overflow a bit. G. roseas do not like wet substrate. Sometimes you'll see them on the glass. If the substrate is too wet, that means telling you that it doesn't like its conditions. Now for feeding, well if you saw in many of my feeding videos, I can't stress this enough, the feeding videos that I make are live schedules. So whenever you see a new feeding video, that's when I last fed the teas. So 
Uh, for adult crickets, adult uh, teas, I give um, two or three crickets once a week or once every two weeks. So you really don't need to feed them more than once a week or maybe more than once a day because tarantulas really have slow metabolisms and they take a lot of time to fully digest. And this is why I discourage power feeding because power feeding does indeed shorten the lifespan of your tea. Then again, it will entice them to grow a lot faster, but that's what you have to sacrifice. So now about handling the uh, rose hair. Well, in my opinion, after studying tarantulas for 16 years and owning uh, three lovely females, well, not sure about this one, I, I tend to say don't really handle them because they are very moody. These guys are famous for their mood swings. They could act docile one minute, then they could turn evil the next day. They have a lot of, uh, how would you call, bad days. Especially, I saw this true for the whole genus, like the Chaco Goldenies. You saw Peach almost bit the paintbrush, and then uh, you have my G. Pulchra that does a lot of threat postures. So then again, you, ha you could have a docile specimen, but you can also have a very mean one. So just exercise caution if you want to handle it. And now about the odd behavior. This is probably the most important part of this video, and uh, hopefully I can relay out some important information about Jiraseas. Okay, so the first thing under is their odd behavior in captivity. Well, most rose hairs are happy to do this. Simply just stay in the cage in one place and do absolutely nothing. This is very normal for a G. rosea to do this. They're not very active um, species during the day. They're nocturnal, but in general, they're not really active spiders as B. smithy or such as this uh, V. sarokabai that likes to walk around the cage a lot. So they're basically just sit there and sit still and that's how they are. So this is why we like to call them pet rocks. Now the next one here is the, um, well again as I said the second odd behavior in captivity is their uh, unusual like uh, temperament swings. So they will act aggressive one minute then they could be docile and then they can change. So they really have a split personality problem with these roseas. And the third thing about the most common one and the most common question that I get about G. is not eating. Well, unfortunately for this species, and I also seen it from the Phonal Palma species, but it's pretty consistent with uh, G. Pulchra and G. Pulstripes. They are not as bad. They like to fast, so that means that they will not eat. They will stop eating for no apparent reason and then for sudden reason they'll somehow get their appetite again then they'll lose it. So that's really normal for a G. rosette to exhibit the, this behavior. So this is why I particularly don't recommend them as great beginners. Well because of their low cost and it's affordable they, are, they might seem to be ones but just, just because of their behavior that I've seen over the years that I kept them that uh, this is why I really don't recommend them. Stuff like uh, B. smithy or uh, B. milia or any of the teas that I suggested in that uh, tea beginner video, those are really great uh, tarantulas to own. So I hope this clarifies you on some of the important aspects of G. rosea and uh, hopefully this uh, detailed video covers it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it guys and thanks for watching.